to be back in the house of God. I want to go directly to the Word, and I want to say to you that um, previously in our text of John 10, Jesus focused on his death as the key event in emptying the fold of Israel. You will remember he said that he would call out his sheep from that fold and make one flock. He focused then on his death as that thing, that key event that would signal for his children to come out of that fold. And then now we come to a place where he's focusing not on his death, but on his deity. That's where we are in the text. You remember on last week, he stated in regards to his deity that I and the Father are one. And then he said, I and the Father have the same hand. He said, there is a sovereign grind and a solid grip but today, Archie, I want to take a closer look at the text. I believe that this is something particular to myself and then ultimately to you and to the broader church. And so I want you to pay particular attention. If you would stand in reverence and respect of God's word, John chapter 10, verses 22 through 25. At that time, the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. You can stop there. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass withers and the flower fades, yet the word of our Lord shall stand forever. O oh God, if ever, I pray in this moment, that you would open our minds and our hearts to hear today what you are saying to the church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. I want to focus in particularly on these words, it was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade. Um, the portico, the patio, the porch, if you will, the porch of Solomon. I, I can't read this text without remembering where I grew up. I, I hear the word porch. And I think of that small four-room house that we lived in as children. We had a tin roof that leaked, um, creaky floorboards through which you could see chicken roosting underneath. We had windows for which you could hear the wind coming through, newspaper stuffed in the cracks. The crowded house was made stuffier steel by a busy wife, five rambunctious kids, and my father would take the occasion to go out onto the back porch. 
There he would clear his mind. I remember him sometimes standing, sometimes sitting down on a turned over five gallon bucket. And I would make my way out to where he was sitting there gazing almost into middle distance and it never seemed to bother him. Um, I'd walk up and he'd call me over and point out some wildlife, some tree, uh, some squirrel jumping from limb to branch, from branch to limb. And he always took the time to engage me. My dad, I knew him, his lumbering figure. I knew him, seven years old. What, what do you think it would have been like had I walked out onto the back porch and said to him, hey fella, I see you sitting on my porch. I'm going to need you to show me some ID. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about your father, but it would not have ended well for me. But this is exactly where we find Jesus in our text. Jesus is walking through the temple and he's there in Solomon's colonnade on the porch, if you will. I don't know what he's thinking about. Perhaps he is contemplating the cross. I don't know. Maybe he's thinking about his crucifixion. Maybe he's focused on his disciples, but while there, gazing down the Kidron Valley over across to the Mount of Olives, taking it all in, some knuckleheads walk up and say to him, show us some ID. <laughs> Yeah, they, 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 they walk up to Jesus. At that time, he is there in the temple. John wants us to know that it is the feast of dedication. And this is important. I, I struggled with this. I, I want to tell you, uh, my homiletics may not ring true for you today because I struggled with how to succinctly present the information, but uh, Antiochus Epiphanes comes into Jerusalem. This is before Jesus' time. And he destroys uh, the temple area. What he does is he wants to merge Hebrew and Greek culture. Uh, they call that, you smart people, Hellenization. They, he, he wanted to come in and merge the two, so he wanted to get rid of the old. And uh, he comes in and he takes all the chambers, the Sunday school rooms, and turns them into brothels, prostitutes, and got on the altar and he sacrificed a pig, roasted a nice something fat there, and then he stuffed the pork down the priest's throats. Got Zeus standing there in the middle of the temple and a and, uh, guy by the name of Maccabees comes in and, and after a long guerrilla type warfare, he, 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 he moves all of that out and they rededicate the temple. That's what they presently, the Jews, celebrate as Hanukkah. Um, they, they light all of these candles and they, they, they celebrate uh, the fact that the temple is being rededicated. It was winter. 
And Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. When John says it is winter, um, any Jew um, reading this information would have felt as if this was redundant. But what John is doing is giving us a literary device. Uh, it will be in our language like saying it's Christmas and it's winter. No, John is trying to paint a picture. He wants us to understand that it is winter in Jesus' life. Uh, that he has now come, as it were, to the end of his public ministry. We'll talk more about that later. Um, that he has come to this um, icy indifference uh, and this cold, callous skepticism that his critics are there and the temperature is cold. Are you still with me? It is winter, and Jesus is walking through the colonnade of Solomon. He's there in the porch area. This porch area is essentially a 600 foot retaining wall left over from Solomon's original temple. Uh, it was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586, and all that was left was this retaining wall. When Herod comes in to remodel the process, he keeps that wall. But he makes it a porch, and um, he's got some 40 to 45 foot columns, white columns that go up to a, a cedar canopy, and it's, it's where people would go to talk and, and reminisce and think about uh, times of teaching. We, we remember when Peter in Acts 3 healed the lame man that they all went to Solomon's colonnade. Right, right, right. We remember elsewhere where Peter is preaching in Acts 5 where they all gathered here in Solomon's colonnade. Here we are at the feast of dedication hanging out in Herod's temple up against Solomon's old wall. And Jesus is walking in the temple. Can, can I just say it one more time? Here we are, Herod's remodeled temple up against the wall, the retaining wall of Solomon's old temple. And Jesus is walking in the temple. Some, somebody's going to help me in just a moment, and, and this is going to be crystal clear to you. Let, 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 let me see if I might could paint a better picture. John, the apostle, gets a peek into heaven. And the text says in Revelation 21, 22, and I saw no temple in the city. This is John looking in heaven. He says, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. Taylor, 
I thought I thought you were going to help me. I thought you were going to get it. I, I, I said now that Jesus is walking in the temple. Solomon's old temple on this side. Herod's temple here. And the real temple is walking in the temple. And I don't understand how it is that these jokers decide to ask him for I do. No, no, no. Wait, wait. You, you, you. Wait. Let me try it again now. Now, now. Here I am in my own house. I said again. The temple is walking in the temple, and they have the nerve to ask him. Show me some ID. Prove that you are who you say you are. For all of them, whining and waiting, they missed the opportunity to worship. Good. Let me try it again. I, I don't know. Maybe the masks have you muffled. Let me try it again. I said, for all of their whining and waiting, they missed their chance to worship. So then my question to you, are you missing your chance to worship? Can you Remember a time where you were searching, hunting, but to say it colloquially, hunting for your glasses, and they were perched on top of your head. What you're looking for you already have. But you're still fumbling around the house trying to find, and mad with folk. You yelling to the other room, have you seen my glasses? I know you know where they are. Where are my glasses? And all the while, they're sitting on top of your head. I wonder, my brothers and sisters, are you whining and waiting on God and missing your opportunity to worship? Oh, that's just, I, I won't labor you long. I, I won't, but, 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 but can I just look at this just a little closer? They, they had no right to ask for his ID, given the fact that in the text we understand that God was exactly where they invited him to be, that God was walking with them in the winter, and that God was answering every question they had. And, and, and that Jones, that's, that's all I'm trying to say here to you today. Don't, Kimberly, don't miss God. Don't, uh, Jay, don't do it. Don't, don't miss God. Why? He, he's exactly where you asked him to be. Yeah. Early in Israel's history, and I'm, I'm, Doc, I'm going to try to rush on. I, man, I wish I could just stop and preach this a little while, but early in Israel's history, uh, David set about to build God a house, and God said, no, I'm good. Uh, I'll stay here in this cloud. Solomon said, no, I've got to build. 
your house. And, and even though I know, 1 Kings 8, I, I, I know that there's nothing on earth that can contain you, but, but would you please? And, and God said, well, I'll choose Jerusalem. And Solomon chose a site, and they built the temple and, and asked God to join them. And God did. And my brothers and sisters, I wonder, are you missing God like they did? You asked God into your life. And you asked him to help you clean up the mess that is your life. And every time you feel his convicting power that tells you not to do this or to do that. You have the nerve to ask for ID. Mm. <laughs> you, say, you, say, you say, God, please save me. God said, okay, cool. I'll, I'll come and dwell inside of you. And then there he is. And you go to do what you used to do. And you feel a little guilty about it. And you step back and say, is that God? You know exactly who it is. He is where you ask him to be God is on the inside. It is like inviting somebody into your house, telling them you got free reign. And then God, I, I, I get excited, I'm trying to come down. God is a twin in your kitchen frying up a bologna sandwich. And now you come out and say, how dare you cook in my kitchen? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And then have the nerve to call the police. <laughs> and that's what we do to God. God is on the inside. And when the word tries to bubble up, we push it back down. Yeah. I, I can preach all day. Y'all just, it's okay. Y'all didn't y'all, y'all, y'all got out of the habit. That's okay. You, you stay right there. Now, now, now look. Uh, uh, He's exactly where you invited him. But then secondly, can I remind you that he is walking with you in the winter. Jesus is walking in the winter right here with these people uh, in the time of trouble in the winter of their lives he is walking with them Solomon builds a temple and he invites God he says now listen now now if ever a time and and, and I'm going to wind it up I'm sorry I'm good gracious if ever a time we deny your word If ever time we have sin in our lives and some occupying army comes in, let it be that we, your people, can come to this place and meet you here together. Well, maybe you might not remember that historically, but you will remember this. If my people... who are called by my name. Humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from the wicked ways, then will I hear from him. I wish I had time to preach a little while. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. God said, listen now, When it gets rough. Oh, if you look back over your life, has not God been faithful? Martin Luther, the great reformer, would have bouts with depression. 
sometimes be in bed uh, for days at a time. And uh, one day, uh, his wife was tired of it. She went into a closet, put on all black, her funeral garb, walked to the bedside of Martin Luther. It startles him. He says, what's happened? She said, well, you acting like God is dead? I figured I'd dress for you. Oh, that's all I'm trying to say here. Christians have lost their mind. Acting like God is dead. Talking about how bad 2020 is. I gotta, I gotta talk to you for a little while. So you start off with COVID dying. Come on down and you start talking about other folk who've died COVID-19, the economy going bad, and all of a sudden, God is dead. Well, 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 well can I just ask you, what about all the years before 2020? What about all the times God saw you through? Uh -huh. what, what, what happened to that? What about all the times when you looked around and God was the only one standing there? No, no, no. I want you to keep your patty cake to yourself. I want some folk who know how to shout. Listen, I'm talking about what about the times God walked with you in the dark time? How dare you? How dare you not notice Christ right here? No, no, let me try it again. How dare you not celebrate the keeping power of God? We told you last time that indeed some people went home to be with God. Yeah. Yes, but everybody didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I know, I know a couple of folk went on to be with God. And, yes. and uh, you got to understand that uh, God had already designed yes. for them to meet him yes. on those days. Yes. But what about the rest of us? Yes. Has not God kept you? Yes. I had time to talk about his keeping power. Yes. Has not God been there for you? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Shh, 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 shh. That's okay. Y'all, 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 we're gonna get y'all some coffee and some donuts here in the record. Uh, but listen, can I just tell you this last thing? And I know I'm long and, and I'm sorry, uh, but but I, I didn't know how to present this. But you don't need to miss. What God is doing right now. Don't think about old Hopewell. Don't think about what old Hopewell will become. What is God doing? Let me tell you something else he's doing. Not only is he exactly, Dwight, listen, and I'm almost, almost done. I, 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 I do apologize, but, 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 but he is exactly where you invited him. He's walking with you during these cold, dark times. And then he has the magnanimous grace ah, to answer your question. Listen, so, so, so he's there. Tannen, they ask for ID. And the text says, if you remember in verses 25, 32, and 34, Jesus answered them. I know you're tired. I'm going to let you go. Watch this. 
Jesus answered them. So, God, who exists outside of time, limited himself, Brown, to 33 years to save all of humanity. But takes the time to answer their questions. Oh, no, no, no. Let me, let me try it again. I, I said, God, who is unlimited by time. Yes, sir. I don't wear a watch. I don't look at calendars. I'm outside of time. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to limit myself yeah. to just 33 years. I, I, just 30, precisely 33 years. Right. Right. And he takes the time to answer questions. Right. Nothing shows long suffering and patience like someone who stops and answers questions. You've had questions wondering what tomorrow is going to look like. Keisha and the God of the universe who's holding all things together, yes. keeping stuff revolving and rotating, yes. stops for a little while yes. to answer your two and a half minute prayer. Yes. Woo! What kind of God is that? And sometimes you need to understand this now. God could ignore us. But John says, This then, this then is the confidence that all of us have. That if we ask, he will hear us. And oh, I'm glad. You, you got I'm, I'm just happy. I'm, I'm, I know, I know. Emmanuel, I'm just happy. Listen, I, I'm glad. Terry, you got to know. You, you, look, they're going to pay you. Look, I'm going to tell you. What, I'm glad that God still answer prayer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm trying to finish. I'm, I'm going to let you go. Listen now. Look, look. Uh, 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 I got that old GMC envoy still driving. And uh, sometimes the battery goes out on the key fob. And, and I, I have difficulty trying to get into it. Uh, but on a new car. You can have the key fob, the key fob on your person. And you can just walk up to the door and it knows who you are and opens up. <laughs> and I wish to had some saved people in here who had the key fob of the Holy Ghost all right, all right. on the inside. So that when God walks up to you, yes. you just open up. Yes. <laughs> Boy, if we had a church who was open to God the way he wants to deliver. Yes. And that's all I'm trying to say here today. And I'm done, I'm done. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say, don't miss what God is doing right now. It's fine and good. It's fine and good. It's fine and good to talk about what God did in the past and, and, and how we used to have church in the past. I, I enjoy talking about that. And it's fine to talk about what the church is going to look like in 20 years. 
it's fine to talk about innovation. And I might be to a place, I don't know. Jay, I might be to a place we might put a screen if I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what the future looks like. But the one thing I can tell you is God is right here. Right now. And that's what I'm glad about. That yay, ooh, yay, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of the dead. I wish I just had some help right there. Ah, with fear no evil. And this is why I don't fear because God. Get bowed, all eyes closed. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. And since we recognize that you are here, and not just in this building, but here with us, as we learn to walk day by day, new challenges and new things that are popping up in life we can trust you right now because you are with us John said we beheld his glory and that glory dwells in us perhaps you're here and you don't know Jesus as Savior we pray that your hearts have been convicted and with your head bowed and eyes closed, you don't know him. We invite you to know him. It is as simple as ABC, acknowledge that you are a sinner. Believe that God sent Jesus to die for your sins and confess him as Lord. If that's you today and you want to make Jesus your savior and Lord, slip your hand in the air, let me pray for you. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. With your head still bound, perhaps there's somebody here who knows Jesus as Savior, but you've not been living like you know you ought to. And so you want to, as it were, give your life back to him. Rededicate your life, rededicate yourself. If that's you, slip your hand in the air. Let me pray for you. I see you. Anybody else? I see you. Anybody else? Let me pray for those, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray now for those who desire to be in right fellowship with you. God, I, I don't know what rocked the boat and caused them to fall out, but whatever it is, I pray that you would give them the power to deal with that temptation, that sin and that you would pull them back into close fellowship. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody say amen.